Welcome back to another development commentary of Indian Garden. In the last video, I went over the changes I made from between the map jam and that video, which was a few week period, and it's been just over a week since that video. And I've only made a few changes because I've been kind of busy doing other stuff, and I just haven't had time to work on this, nor the drive to, because I'm sort of at a point where I'm waiting for other people, and I'm specifically going to be moving on to mob design very shortly. And I wanted to recap everything I have up until this point from that previous video before I get into mob design, because mob design is going to be a fairly big part of this map for obvious reasons, because it's going to be fairly combat focused. I'm not sure if I want to go or where I'm going with story yet, so I'm going to be focusing a lot on combat and mob design, and then I'm probably going to try to write a story around what I have. To some extent, I already have a little bit of an idea, uh, but, you know, I, I'm probably going to be designing some mobs later today. I'm going to be talking to someone, hopefully, uh, and we're going to design a few mobs. I, I really want to utilize every person I have at hand, all of my contacts, basically. I'm going to try to make the best map I can. I'll probably talk about this later in the video, um, but to start with, we're going to talk about what I started with with the last video, which is the HUD, because it's changed once again. The biggest change, or really the main change, is that it's centered now, and the biggest change on that is the hearts are now entirely custom, because you can't really move the vanilla hearts locations, so I took the code from Heart Rush, which is a map that uh, TS made, I helped a little bit. I theorized this heart system a while ago, but never bothered to make it, so TS ended up making it because, uh, I don't know, I just didn't feel like it. So he did anyway, and I just asked him for it, and I have it here now. I sort of changed a little bit how it works, mostly to fit how I code, as well as getting rid of redundant files that I'm not using, like the armor generation, as well as the uh, just a bunch of stuff that were there that I don't need. I just needed the hearts. And they look like vanilla hearts. Uh, give me a second. I have a module equipped. We're just going to... We're going to talk about that later uh, design thing. But uh, basically, it acts like vanilla hearts. Um, if I give myself instant damage for a little bit. You can see uh, you can see it happen. We're just gonna give myself 150 ticks of instant damage, which would be in 15 uh, damage dealt. So now I'm at two hearts, and you can see that my hearts aren't shaking. And this was even if I wasn't moving uh, my hot bar to the center of the screen like I did, I would probably still do the custom hearts because they don't shake unless I tell them to, and I like having this amount of control. I can also change the color of the hearts. So I can change it to like a bright red. Uh, I can also do poison or like that purple. Um, or the default color. Now, giving me full control over the health display allows me to do something like this. Where I have this blinking heart. And this is nice. I like having this. This is a nice little display that your health is low. And now if I take one more damage, my hearts now start to shake. And it's not a violent shake, mostly because of a technical limitation. I do, in theory, have a way to shake the hearts, but I sort of decided against having a more violent shake. So just one heart every tick gets chosen to be bumped up by one pixel. And also this speed of blinking here is doubled from the other one. I also have some some visual changes whenever you pick up a health pickup so if i pick this up you can see that uh, the heart that is being filled bumps up by one pixel which is a nice little visual that i like to have and just little minor stuff like that that i have full control over what is going on with the health bar and i like it i like having that control so if as i said even if i wasn't centering the hud i could I would probably still do this. The biggest hurdle was just me integrating it. I didn't really feel like it, but now I can change the HUD a lot more. I might eventually make a configurable option that will allow you to move the HUD uh, wherever you want, but I'll, I'll think about it. I'm not entirely sure if I want to integrate that yet. 
it will be something I might add later because it's just a simple little thing that'll probably be alongside the control customization, which is something I talked about last time as well. Um, so that's the HUD changes. I do want to talk about some changes I did to the laser. The fire laser now has a much shorter range, at least the primary fire. The secondary fire has the same range as default, or as before, but the primary fire, which will probably be your main source of damage, is much shorter. And I might change the range on all of them, except for maybe the explosive beam, because this, you probably don't want to be shooting directly next to yourself, for obvious reasons. But uh, I think I'm probably going to lower the range on most of them. At very least, the primary fire being a shorter range will probably help with mob design because I want combat to feel more in your face. If all of your damage options are long range, then you don't really have a reason to close the gap on enemies except for maybe picking up health drops but even then if you're far away from enemies there's not really a reason or you wouldn't really be taking damage so I want to force players to close the gap or at very least sign enemies with ranged combat in mind but that I feel is kind of stale to some extent uh, I sort of like combat where you have to be closer I might even make it so that there's a damage ramp up so the closer you are to an enemy, the more damage you do with the fire laser or something. That's stuff I'll figure out later, depending on the direction I go with mob design. Uh, so, I don't know. And on the topic of combat and mob design and stuff, I do want to talk about this module I had equipped when I started. Which is the um, currency energy module, or cur energy as I call it. Um, this text here is inaccurate. Uh, it's actually not free if you have currency, but you can fire it for free if you don't. So if I set my currency to like 100, you can see that it does use one energy, and everything else uses the same amount of energy that it would normally. So this uses four energy, and that uses six, and stuff like that. If I summon in some dudes for combat we can sort of get out of here a little bit. Uh, that's the wrong one. I'm a little out of practice as I've said I've been busy doing stuff. Doing other things anyway. Uh, we are going to pick up this currency over here. And this is sort of uh, something that is an interesting take on combat, I feel. It makes you have to run around to fight. Now, I'm not sure if I like this that much, because when you do run out of currency, it's a lot of just shooting with your primary fire and running around until you get more energy, and then you have options again. Uh, so I'm not really sure on that, but it did make me think of maybe changing how energy works. Because right now, you, um, let me actually change my thing back. Right now, you sort of empty your energy. Sorry about the beeping. You empty your energy, then you have to wait. And if you don't have your energy regeneration upgrade maxed out, you could wait for quite a while. So I feel maybe I change the primary fire to give energy back on kill or on hit or something, it would force the player to sort of shoot with their primary fire, which is a close range thing, forcing the player to be closer, meaning I could sort of set the engage distance to the distance that the primary fire of the fire laser is, uh, and that would force the player to regain energy through fighting, and then you can use your other stuff after you've regained some energy. Now, I'm not entirely sure on this design idea, I'm going to have to test it a bunch, uh, so we're going to see on that. On the topic of testing stuff, I am doing another map jam coming up soon, and I'm going to be testing the health pickup system, specifically how it plays. Uh, I changed how Desperation works a little bit from the last time. Uh, now there is a minimum drop chance, and the maximum drop chance is variable. The maximum drop chance goes from the minimum drop chance to 100. I probably should change the maximum drop chance to actually be the maximum drop chance instead of that just being 100 by default. Um, so basically, I changed it so 
your actual drop chance or your your maximum drop chance changes based on what your health is and what the maximum amount of health you've lost is. So if you are at half health and you've been at half health uh, for a while, your maximum drop chance will slowly creep up to match that and it'll slowly go up to 100 every eight seconds it'll increase your maximum drop chance by one until it hits 100 now if you pick up a health drop you will no longer be at the lowest health you've ever been since you last were at full health which is how it determines your maximum your minimum missing health basically and it'll slowly creep that maximum drop value back down to the minimum drop value every eight seconds this basically makes it so if you've been at uh, your lowest health value for a while you won't be stuck there for much longer it'll slowly creep up your drop chance until you can you're basically guaranteed or you'll just have a overall much higher uh, health drop chance and i'm just going to see how this plays later on i'm going to probably be tweaking this desperation system quite a bit it's fairly simplistic right now there's a lot of just basic logic statements that are dictating how the drop system works and i will probably be changing that as time goes on, uh, just mostly just seeing how this health system plays in a different map. Uh, so that's going to be something that I will be messing with in the future, fairly shortly in the future, actually. Um, Adri and I are going to be doing a map jam. Uh, Adri's the same guy I made bit depth with, and that went pretty well. We're going to be intentionally designing a map that we are pretty sure that we can do in three days. We already have a few ideas. Uh, but we want to try to make something that we know we can finish in three days, or at least fairly certainly finish in three days, three days. And if we can't finish it in those three days, then we will continue to work on it afterwards. We just want to, we know that we perform best under pressure in that three day time span. So if we can make something that we're very certain that we can finish in that time span, then we'll probably get it done because both of us are very busy and we have other projects we're working on. We're just taking breaks from our large projects to work on a jam map together, which we haven't done in a while. The last jam map we did together was bit depth, as I said, and that went pretty well. Um, but yeah, that's basically everything I wanted to talk about uh, when it comes to the design of the map. And now I want to just talk about uh, the sort of overall thing in the map. I think I talked about earlier that this is going to be a single player map. I didn't talk about this in the last video because I forgot, but I early on in the design of this, I sort of just decided that this would be a single player experience because designing stuff to work with multiplayer well when it has so much complexity gets very difficult and I feel like I would potentially be sacrificing quality in order to make this work with multiple people, even though some people probably wouldn't be playing with multiple people. So, just designing them on one player allows me to have a lot more freedom. And it also just makes development a little easier. I, in general, design everything around the potential that multiple people will be using it at the same time. Like, everything that I designed for this in the map jam would in theory work with multiple people. There is the grapple hook, which does work with multiple people, but there is the few issues with somebody else entering... Uh, minecart like if i'm looking here and someone else right clicks me then they would enter the minecart nothing would really happen uh i fixed a bug where you would uh let's say i look at this grapple hook and then somebody else somewhere else in the map uh is looking at a grapple hook and i right click them i would then go to that grapple hook that i looked at last and that was just a minor bug fix uh, a little weird quirk of how i programmed the grapple hook system uh but designing this for one player allows me to have a lot more freedom. Uh, the HUD still technically might, or it's in theory works for multiple people. The currency, energy, your selected thing, all of the upgrades you have and all of that, all are based on you. But the health color and all that is a universal variable. As well as everything in the terminal is also a universal variable. Um, just because of how I designed the terminal. Uh, I designed the entire terminal system after I decided to make this a single player map, meaning the terminal is not player specific. So anything anyone does in the terminal 
affects everyone else's terminal, as well as everyone else's upgrades and their modules, because this wasn't designed for multiple people. And that was mostly just a cut down on the amount of scoreboards that I have on the map. Basically, if I had this work for multiple people, I would have to have one scoreboard for everything that the terminal does. And I just didn't want to do that. I didn't feel like it. And also, terminals, uh, lectern GUIs like this with multiple people don't work because it shows the same screen to everyone. So if somebody opens the terminal and opens the upgrade thing, then everyone sees that change. So I just didn't want to have to deal with that. So I'm just not going to. As well as boss design gets much more difficult when you have to work with multiple players, especially if I'm going to be making completely custom uh, AIs, sort of AIs in quotes. They're just going to be scripted events, basically, that just happen to interfere with the player in some level. But that's how most boss fights are anyway. Uh, as well as if I add any custom mob AI and stuff, really anything becomes much more complicated when you have to consider that multiple people can interface with it at one time. And that's just a general thing. If you aren't designing an entire thing around multiple people, then it's not going to work with multiple people well. So I'm just not going to, uh, because it could sacrifice the single player experience for trying to create a playable multiplayer experience. Uh, and when it comes to this, I don't want to sacrifice quality. I want to make the best map I possibly can. I'm going to be utilizing as many people as I can, because I have, I have a lot of people that I can work with to make something, and I want to not sacrifice any quality. So I'm going to, as I said, utilize everyone I know that can help. I have somebody that's going to be helping me doing mob design. I have already someone that's doing building for me, which is very polite. Uh, and I'm probably going to try to get music. I might be getting writers to help. Um, I'm already a co-writer on a webcomic, so I do have experience writing, uh, and I've done writing before in the past. So I might be the only writer on this. I do want to try getting music for this. I have a few people in mind that might be able to help. If not, I'll find someone that can help with music. And I might find someone for helping with animation, because in the previous one I said, uh, looking at the Scorpion boss, that that's a very complicated rig, and I'm not sure if I can do it justice. Or do it justice. So if I can't, then I will get someone else to do animation for me. And just stuff like that. I want to make the best map I can. And if that means not making it by myself, then I very well will not make it by myself. Because I've done so many maps by myself in the past that have turned out alright. Like Overshadow, which is a map that I don't talk about, that took me months because I was doing it entirely on my, my own. I did everything alone. There's also another project of mine, Infrastructure Night, um, which I don't talk about, but I do tweet a lot, uh, tweet about a lot. Um... At least I was whenever I was actively working on it. That's another project that I've been working on mostly alone at this point. TS has done some work, but it's broadly just been me. I've been doing all of my own resources and stuff. And a lot of stuff. I, I work alone too much. But I also feel like I could become over-reliant on other people. So I, I have to meet a middle ground, and I'm not sure where that middle ground is yet. And hopefully I'll find that with this project. But we'll see. I'm not sure the time frame on this. I'm also not sure how often I will be dedicating uh, primarily working on this project. I did step away from working on this for a while to work on something else for someone else. Um, but I'm back working on it now, as I said earlier, to do mob design. And that will probably be in the next video, whether I'll have a few examples done or whether it'll all just be ideas written down on a notebook somewhere. I'm not sure where that'll be by the time I get around to making another one of these. Uh, but yeah, that should wrap this one up. As always, thanks for watching, and I will catch y'all next time.